Hello and welcome to my SEMrush competitor analysis. Here I'm going to be showing you how to do competitor analysis for SEO using the SEMrush tool. And if you would like to follow along, I will leave my affiliate link in the description. And if you click that, you can get a free trial to SEMrush. We can actually follow along with me. Let's begin. So when it comes to competitor analysis, there are a few things that you want to look for. In fact, there's probably a lot that you can look for. In my opinion, two of the biggest are going to be backlinks and keywords. What we want to do is find a specific competitor. In this example, I went with popularaitools.ai. I'm very big even on YouTube when it comes to software and AI, so I thought I would use this as an example. What we want to do is type that in in the domain overview section. And upon doing that, like I talked about, backlinks and organic traffic is what we're looking for. As you can see here, they have an authority score of 33, which isn't too bad. I did a different video about that, but in a nutshell, the bigger it is, the better it's going to be. They have 7.4K for organic search traffic, not too bad. They also have 6.3 thousand backlinks, but if you look right here, 538 referring domains. So what that means is that there's gonna be plenty of domains that have a ton of links from, which could be quite a spammy tactic. Are these backlinks worth going after? Let's find out because that's gonna be one of the most important things when it comes to competitor analysis. Let's click on their domain, or excuse me, their authority score right here. And here's gonna be a more closer look at their authority score right here. It says above average, this domain's backlink profile is fine, but its link network isn't as relevant as other domains in the same niche. As you can see, there's gonna be a lot of like suspicious links as well. So that's kind of like what my guess was going to be. But more specifically, what we can do is look at say some of the backlinks that they have. Let's click right here or just simply go to backlinks right here. And here's where it gets fun. What we can do is simply click on active. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for ones that they currently have. If they lost them, yes, it is an opportunity for maybe you to go and pick them up. But in this specific scenario, I'm looking for active. I also want follow. We want to get link juice from it. While no follow links do have their place in SEO, I'm just placing a much higher priority on looking at follow links. And as you can see, they're going to be sorted by the... Um, authority overall, the authority score, excuse me. And what we can do is this kind of scroll through. Now, if you're not really sure which links are going to be good and which are not going to be good, just having a quick look at this, just from the ones I've seen, they don't look all too great. And I'll give you a couple reasons why. First and foremost, this is going to be on chat GPT. So allow me to open this up very quickly. All right, and they have their own, you know, way of using a GPT overuse phrase remover, and it looks like their website, this is going to be their link. A very quick note is that if anyone at any time can go in and place a link on a website, it's probably not going to be a great link, okay? So that's going to be with ChatGPT, despite the fact that the authority score is really high because, of course, ChatGPT is a very powerful platform. Still, nevertheless, oh, let's see, we have Nancy Dunn. I'm looking for some in specific articles that are, say, related to, like, top AI software tools for your online business. Once again, this is just going to be on a WordPress blog. Like, anyone can go and create this. Just because WordPress.com has a big authority score, which they've built up over years, doesn't mean this is going to be a good link. Obviously, you can just go there and create it. We have an edu, edu one. We have a forums one. Like once again, not very big. A board one here, and it looks like we're getting more into like the kind of like gibberish type stuff here. You know, uh, cloudlinks.us, southeast one, so on and so forth. More of those. More of those. We have like more gibberish down here. So it looks like their backlinks aren't all that great, and that's a good thing. Okay, because when you're doing competitor analysis. Not every competitor or every competitor that you go after, there's going to be links that you want to get. And some are just going to be like, uh -huh, you can keep them. Like, I don't want to get any links from where they're getting from. In fact, maybe you might not even want to get a link from this competitor if it came down to it. But from what it looks like, nothing worth going after. And that's completely fine. That's a part of the competitor analysis process. Sometimes you're going to get some great juicy spots where you can get backlink opportunities. And some you're going to be like, nope, I'll leave it to another competitor. Nevertheless, we didn't have a lot of luck with that, which is fine, like I said, it's part of the process. However, now what we can do is look for the organic keywords. What we wanna do is look for the low hanging fruits, some of the easier to rank keywords that we can go after, especially if one, you're a newer website, or two, if you're a bigger website, it's probably gonna be much quicker for you to rank, assuming you have a much higher authority, and maybe you've been building it up for years and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go right here, and I'm going to be in the organic research spot. I have the same domain right here. And I'm going to be under positions right here as well. 
So as you can see, there's going to have some of the organic search positions. There's 7,917, but I think the best part of this is going to be these positions and how we can really just filter a lot of this out. So if we go to fish uh, positions here, let's let that load. Great. So this is going to be everything that's going to be in the top 10 and to make our lives even better. Like some of these are going to be much more difficult. You know, maybe you don't have enough authority in your website yet where you want to go with those. So what we can do here is go to KD and we can target anything that's going to be very easy and easy. So aside from just clicking on it right here, we can go custom range. We can do from zero, let's say to 29. That's going to be very easy and easy keywords. Let's click on apply and see what we get. All right, and what we can also do, you'll notice how we have the keyword difficulty percentage. We can click on this where it's gonna show like all the higher ones first, and then we can change it again so we get the lower. So now what we're doing is we're going for any keywords that they have on like, you know, the first page, top 10, and we're looking at the easiest to rank keywords. So if we scroll down ever so slightly, we're gonna notice that we can have plenty to kind of look at. And it looks like right here, what they're doing is this say like toasty.ai. They just have a, you know, tools and then toasty AI, kind of like an overview slash review of it is my guess, where they just, you know, talk about the features, what it's all about. And my guess is that there's so many AI tools out there that anytime they're maybe writing about them, they might not be as popular yet, but they'll be popular enough to at least generate some volume. And the cool thing about this is that, let's say for example, you know, you might be in a different niche, but this is with AI. If you're creating something about say AI software and you're only getting quote unquote 40 people and you're doing that multiple times for a lot of software, that's gonna be perfect for generating leads because obviously you're getting people who are interested in software and software is also a pretty big deal because one, it usually pays a lot when it comes to AdSense. Two, leads usually cost more if you wanna do paid advertising, which is why organic is fantastic. And three, you can obviously build a list that way and send them to specific offers and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of value in that. And just scrolling down, a lot of these are going to be like the basic keywords, but something like this looks fantastic. We have copymatic pricing right here. It says it's a transactional as well as navigational. You know, in my opinion, this is a fantastic keyword where you have product name and then pricing. The reason for this is because someone usually has that one last question, like how much does it cost? How much is it going to be monthly? What is the price for the specific plans? Are there any discounts? Is there a trial? Uh, I do a lot of software, like that's my favorite niche in terms of like online business and software. So I'm very familiar with that. And pricing keywords are very good for that, especially when they're very easy to rank for. If we look at this, the keyword difficulty is two. And you'll notice this is coming from their copymatic review. So they're not even targeting copymatic pricing exactly. It just happened to be showing up when they did their long review. So let me to open an incognito window and I'm going to type in copymatic pricing and we'll take a look at the top 10 and see what they have to offer. All right. So we have copymatic pricing here at the top. We have copymatic. Okay. Aside from that, people always ask. So let's see the four best content writing services. We have copymatic review. Uh, this is just going to be once again copymatic. What's the big deal? We have review. You'll notice this happens a lot. Usually, when you do reviews, like there's going to be a small pricing guide with it. That's why they say review, features, price. You'll notice pricing is coming up here. So, what's happening is people are writing reviews for this software and they're just naturally getting ranked because they talk about it $29 per month, talking about the prices there. We have pricing here. This looks like the only one that is somewhat targeting it. So, it says AIG, C-List, AI Tools, and it says the ultimate guide to copymatic pricing and alternatives. I would probably just call it copymatic pricing and then like then alternatives, but you know, to each their own. So that's like one that's <laughs> kind of optimized for it, not fully in my opinion. And once again, there they are. I think there were like nine or 10, but once again, they're going to, this is going to be the only one that's somewhat optimized for it. If you just create an article that's copymatic pricing, you have a much higher chance of ranking quicker, especially if your website that at least has some type of authority, this makes it a fantastic keyword to go after. As we talked about before, it's transactional. People are looking to purchase, and it's also great for generating leads because if someone is interested in copymatic AI, they're probably interested in other AI softwares that you can obviously build a list to, and then, you know, review those, talk about those and so on and so forth. So Despite the fact, I think this one had around quote unquote 40 traffic per month or so. Like I said, those are ballparks. This is a fantastic keyword to go after. Go after. Great opportunity. And I'm just mentioning this because this is kind of like how my brain works when I'm saying like, is this a good keyword to go after? You might not be in the AI niche, but you can use these examples to think about like, what else everyone else is doing in Google? Are they going after this keyword specifically? Is it yours for the taking? And so on and so forth. Let's check it out and look at maybe one or two more. 
So like I said, these are all the low hanging fruit ones. You can always change the KD if you wanna like maybe look for something a little bit more and so on and so forth. So what it seems though, is that a lot of these are just like main, you know, product pages or like kind of like reviews, overviews, where you talk about features and so on and so forth. There's so many AI tools now that it's probably gonna be much easier to rank for them because not everyone is creating articles about them. So uh, literally anything AI, okay. Let's see, let's see, Blue Willow AI pricing. So once again, just Blue Willow. They don't have Blue Willow pricing, but they are ranking for it just for the fact that they created an article about this. Tweet Hunter pricing, once again, another good one. They're just doing Tweet Hunter. These lyrics don't exist. And let's see, what else do we have here? How to cancel, is Soul Gen free? Here's another good one, is something free? This is kind of like saying, you know, if there's a free trial, is it free to use? Despite the fact that a lot of people say like something, someone is looking for something that's free, that means they're not going to pay. I couldn't disagree anymore just because a lot of free trial keywords convert very well. Okay. Plus it's the software, you know, that's going to be in charge of that, like turning someone into a lead into a customer. They're usually very good at that. So just because someone is asking if something is free doesn't mean you shouldn't go after it. In fact, once again, so they have the SoulGen AI art generator review. So this is coming off a review post. I bet if we were going to look for this, not many people are creating articles just based on this keyword and let's check it out. All right, so we have the main website. Uh, let's see, anyone know how to use it without, couldn't see what else it was saying. So we have a free alternative, we have pricing. Is it really safe? So that could be probably another keyword, exploring SoulGen. Once again, though, like no one is really, I think they're coming up two times right there. Yeah, so free trial, free, and so on and so forth. Just another example of a keyword where people just really aren't targeting it, about 30 searches per month. Not too bad in my opinion. Oh, let's see, we have a cancel subscription. Those are also not too bad. When you think about it, someone's looking to cancel, but if they're canceling something, it's because they don't like it. And what that means is they might be looking for an alternative, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. There's always ways to go after specific keywords. And you're like, oh, James, I don't wanna go after like that keyword. Well, you can, you know, there's, you can show them how it's done, give them a tutorial and say, hey, if you weren't happy with SoulGen, here's an alternative that you might wanna read more about in this review article I have, okay? Just giving you some uh, extra ideas there. And here's a, a perfect one, let's see. Content at scale free trial. Free master AI content detection. So free trials are great ones. Now we have some reviews. These are gonna be, it looks like, you know, let's see, 13, a little bit more difficult. And we have Tweet Hunter price and so on and so forth. Is Soul Gen legit? How about something like that? Let's type that in. I think that was one we looked for similar. So give me one second. All right, so is Soul Gen legit? And it's funny how like number one is gonna be AI where it's someone saying avoid, but nevertheless, we have a lot of reviews here. I am not specifically familiar with this company, so I don't know if they are legit, despite you know a lot of people saying that it looks like it might not be. But just to kind of give you an idea here, you could make an article specifically just about this. You'll notice that it's mostly like exploring, is it really safe, which is kind of similar. And they're answering that question in this because they know they can pick up some traffic from it. But if you optimize specifically for that keyword, you'll most likely do better assuming you have you know some type of authority on your website. And the cool thing is you notice a lot of like Reddit threads are popping up. What you can do is actually go in there and answer it and then link to your article in case you want to send some people to your website that way. What that allows you to do, maybe if you have AdSense, AdSense on there, you can make some money that way. You can generate leads. Or of course, if you have a compelling article that leads to an affiliate link, you can make a commission that way by say recommending, in this case, SoulGen. Like I said, once again, I'm not too familiar with it. I don't know what it's all about. This is just in this specific example. But nevertheless, that's how like I go about doing keyword research. I look and I see, sometimes I'll even go for those much longer keywords that no one wants to optimize for because they look for it and they say, well, it's only getting, you know, 30 for volume a month around there. 
why don't I just create a review and then answer it in a frequently asked question, which you can do. But in the beginning, when you're looking to get traction, these are some of my favorite keywords. The ones that people aren't going after, I don't know why, you know, maybe they have bigger fish to fry. Like entrepreneur might not be going for like one of these really micro keywords, but you know, someone who's just getting started might. And uh, that's kind of what I have to say about that in terms of doing keyword research, a fantastic way of doing it when it comes to looking at your competitors. There's so much more that you can do, but like I said, when it comes to like the SEMrush competitor analysis, backlinks, keywords, the two biggest things that are gonna help you get up and running. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you. I hope you enjoyed this competitor analysis tutorial. And of course, if you haven't gotten to test out SEMrush, I will leave my affiliate link in the description. And if you click that, you can get a free trial with them. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.